Here's the continuation. This is a continuation of our tutorial series in the SMJ closed group program. And I wanted to mention the fact that if you'll notice when we're doing the, the 12 count, I'm not really concerned about the full work right now. I just want to concentrate. Remember what I said, learn the angles. That's what you need to do. You need to learn the angles. I will put the footwork in when it's time, but it's not time yet. The footwork and the striking have to go together. So all this has been laid out in the training. So if you're worried about what step, really don't care. You can step forward if you like when you strike. I really don't, it doesn't really matter. The key is as long as you're not off balance. And as long as you're off balance, you're fine. So I'm not really worried about the stepping at this point. We will address it in future videos, okay? So we really, really, uh, I wanted to mention that. Again, I can't stress this enough. A lot of people work the 12 angles and they work it from a one-dimensional aspect. We don't do that. And again, I've seen a lot of people do that and that's not what we do, okay? So that's, that's why it doesn't work for me, okay? Uh, and that's all I'm gonna say about that. We, that's not how we do things. For me, the 12 angles is the heart and soul of my program. If you learn that and to learn the different levels and the aspects, you really, really are going to do very well. Now, the second, this next section is going to cover about five, maybe six. We're going to cover talk and cover about six strikes. Now, where do the strikes fit into all this? The strikes fit in with the angles. Once you learn the angles, then you start applying the striking techniques. And what twirling you see that we do is simply to add confusion and deception to our movements. Okay, so it's really important that you learn when you're doing the angles that you start learning how to get the strikes in and where they come from. They'll, lead, they'll seem to come out of nowhere rather than doing this hacking motion and this kind of stuff. This twirling sets up the next angle. And again, it's meant to deceive the opponent so he doesn't see it coming. One of the aspects of the Kilos Paruparo FMA SMJ uh, Filipino program is that our program, we focus on the blind spots. So whether you realize it or not, I'm actually training you how to work the blind spots so that you can get the attack, you can get your, your strike in or, or perform what you need or do what you need to do without your opponent either seeing it or being aware. That's very, very important, and it certainly is one of the big, deeper meanings and uh, objectives of, of our program, of the Filipino training overall. It is the biggie. It is the, uh, it is the goal, is to be able to do things where the opponent can't see it, or, or they, don't, it, they don't see it until it's too late. Okay. So let's go ahead and start with the, with the striking. And it all starts with the grip. Okay, now I'm big on the grip. And there's different ways to train the grip. You can strike different things, solid objects, to train the grip. This, and this is what I call the warrior grip. What you'll do is you'll hit, hit, hit. And that'll train the grip. And that's what I call the warrior grip. And you have to have it. A lot of people who do forms in competition don't have the warrior grip. They, they work the techniques, but they don't work the impact part. That's really, really important, okay? So, with the grip, you want to grip on the Kali stick. You want to grip it about three inches or three fingers from the bottom, okay? Just like I have it here, okay? And the first move we're gonna do this on this grip is we're gonna start from the center position. Now, we have three basic positions. We have what I call the open, center, okay? This is kind of like the right uh, center line opening or open position. This is the middle center position, and this is the closed position. Now remember this, this position and the closed position are transitional. For example, when you're sitting here doing this and you go into move, you may chamber, but this is transitional. You're not gonna stay here and fight from here. You're not gonna stay here and fight from here. You're gonna stay in another position, but these 
these positions are their transitions. Just like in karate, the stances are transitional. When you move forward, you're not going to fight like this in a forward stance. It is a transitional. This is transitional. This is transitional. So you're going like this, you're going like this. You're getting set up to strike, but you're moving from one position to the other. When you do your uh, 11, I mean your 12 count angles of the attack and defense, make sure you go to the chambered position on either side of the body. Whether, whatever, whatever angle you're gonna do, whether it's a one, a 10, 11, whatever, you need to have, have it chambered so that you can produce the power and the snap that you need to. Okay, so that's really, really important. Okay, so let's go over the strikes. We're gonna cover the first six, just like we did in the first training. All right, so here we go. First one is the, oh, before we start, I'm gonna tell you that when we do our twirl, it's real important that when you twirl, you keep as many fingers on the stick as possible. You need to keep at least these three fingers on the stick at all times and you'll open the hand with the last two fingers just enough to complete the twirl that's what you want okay so you got to have that and you got to know when to twirl and when not to real important okay so if you'll see you'll notice that we're going to go from one position to the other and i'm going to go slow so you can fall okay so the first the first strike that we're going to do is called an inside redondo Okay, and that's Filipino for redondo, like in Spanish. So what we're gonna do is it's an inside strike. Inside strike. Inside strike. Inside and stop. Inside stop. I don't advocate you doing this until you get used to it. Get used to it and stop. I prefer you to do this and stop so you have control over it rather than trying to get sloppy with it. Don't, don't worry about speed, it'll come. But you gotta get used to it. the hand has to get used to it. So what I want you to do is start getting used to the inside of the level. Inside meaning inside here, okay? The next technique besides the inside redondo is the outside redondo. So what you're gonna do, this is the inside. Now you're gonna do the outside. Outside redondo, outside redondo, and stop. Outside the long Now you got to open your hand up a little bit to start to get used to it. That's okay. But the goal is not to stay there. And don't certainly don't hold it like this. The goal is to keep the, as much of the as many fingers as you can on it. So that way you're, you're, you're gonna like I said you wanna you're not you're gonna have to open your hand some. So the last two fingers is the key there. But you want to keep as many fingers in case you bump into something. The weapon doesn't get taken away from you. Okay, so we have the inside redondo, inside stop, inside stop, inside stop, outside redondo. Okay, so outside, 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 outside. Okay, the next one that we're gonna do is the uh, we're gonna do the we're gonna do the uh, reverse redondo. Now the reverse redondo can be done this way. Why would you want to do this? Well, just in case you need to come in underneath. See, remember that we attack so that you can't, they can't see it. You may have to be here and come underneath his guard and come up the middle. Like kind of like a six to 12 uh, on the clock. That's what you're doing. So remember that uh, that's, that's one. Now we have the outside redondo, the inside redondo, which is more of a position to strike to get it in under their guard, under their guard. That's the inside redondo, inside, inside. That's how the position would stick. If this was a sword, you would come in and come underneath and, and rip them up. You would come underneath, rip them and cut up, okay? And then you can come down and finish them off, okay? The other thing is uh, outside redondo and reverse redondo, okay? So outside, like this, outside redondo, reverse redondo. So you go down, you come up. Go down, come up. Go down, come up. That is the outside redondo, reverse redondo. Outside. Outside meaning out here. When I say inside, I mean inside here. 
That's what we're doing. So inside Rolando can be a strike, but it's to set up something, like to set up a step. But it'll come from underneath this vision, and that's what you want. Okay, again, outside Rodando. Outside, reverse. Now the reverse is a strike. Outside Rodando is a strike. Inside Rodando can be a strike. It's more of a thrust, or to set up a thrust. And that's what you're doing. All right, so when you get that down, then you start working them in combination. So now you've got the inside Rodando, reverse Rodando, Rever uh, reverse Rolando outside and outside Rolando. So you start working them together and you start putting them together. So when you do a number one angle defense, see how you got the inside Rolando. So if somebody attacks you, you attack, there's your one number one, and then you inside Rolando the opponent. See, or you stick this and you got it. So that's where that comes from. Okay. The other strike that I'm going to talk about is the horizontal strike, and it's real simple. Go from here or here. All you're doing is going forward and back. The key here is to be able to think high, middle, low. So you high, middle, low. So when you do the horizontal strikes with the 12 angles of attack and defense, instead of just doing one and two or side to side, you would probably do series. Once you start creating that philosophy of dynamics, it starts looking like it flows from one movement to the other. It looks like a kata. Then you put all this together. See how this is going to work? So, uh, the last strike that I'm going to cover, of course, is the horizontal. And I want you guys to just cross, weapon outside. High, middle, low. Back. High, middle, low. Back, high, middle, low. So when you do your, your angles of attack, remember this move side to side, seven and eight. Okay, well remember, uh, you're, what you're doing is you're, you're moving side to side, but remember, if you're doing it dynamically, you might have to hit this way. You might have to block the punch and hit him this way. You might have to hit him sideways or hit him with, with behind the neck, with what we talked about. The next video that I'm going to do is I'm going to address uh, once we cover all the strikes. So I should say I'm going to finish up the striking in level one. Everything that we've done in this tape, first two tapes, is level one. We need to finish that. But I will say this. You'll notice that I'm not covering footwork. Why? Because you're not there yet. In other words, you need to learn how to handle the stick. You need to learn your angles of defense. You need to learn how to manipulate the stick. And then I'm gonna teach you how to impl implement the footwork. Because the footwork in this system works with the foot, I mean the, the strikes work with the footwork. Not the other way around. You'll see a lot of people do this, and this, and this, and back, and this. All their footwork, and that's fine. But that's not what we do. Because what you need to do with your footwork is you need to combine it with the strikes. So however, whatever we're striking with, then you implement the footwork and they work together. So we don't do one and then the other. And remember, there's a lot of training out there that's one dimensional. That one dimensional training is not what we do guys. We don't do this and that and this and that. Is that wrong? No, of course not. It is footwork. And it is, it is legit, it, it, it is what the way that you're supposed to move. The problem with that is nothing's going on here. So when you move, you gotta combine your strikes with your footwork. So if I'm gonna do footwork, I need to make sure that I got something going up here while I'm moving so they can't see what I'm doing. Remember, I'm gonna hide it. So while they're looking at the stick, they're not gonna see the footwork that I'm doing. So I hope that kind of, gives you an idea of the direction that we're going. We've got some great training. I will be teaching concepts of Wing Chun. I will be teaching, of course, more advanced uh, aspects and concepts of FM, F, F, uh, Filipino martial arts and other things, of course. So, uh, so with that being said, thank you for listening. I appreciate you being a member of this organization. 
I will take you far. All you have to do is be willing and remember this. There's a lot of people out there with good skill, but without tactics, it's not gonna work. Great guys, they look good, they, they perform well, but in our system, we believe in tactics, or excuse me, we believe in the skill, the tactics, and the commitment. That is our tripod of, of SMJ. Skill, tactics, and commitment. You gotta have some skill. You got some skill, you're good. Then you got some tactics. Tactics like when to do it, when not to do it, how to assess what's going on. So that way it'll make your martial art much more effective. And the commitment. You've got to be all in. All in. If you've got all those three, that's all you need. Some skill, tactics, understanding of tactics, and the commitment. That commitment, of course, comes from you. I can't, bring, I can't give that to you. You have to, you have to put that in. But if you'll give me the commitment, I will give you the skill and I will give you the tactics. I promise you, I will do that. And you won't be disappointed. Thank you very much and good luck.